If you've been working with Salesforce for any amount of time, I'm sure that you've heard the term multi-tenant by now. But what does that term really mean, and what does it have to do with the way the platform operates? Let's take a look. We'll start with the definition. A multi-tenant architecture isolates and concurrently supports the varying requirements of many tenants. And a tenant can be an organization, a business unit, maybe even an individual. The best way to really think about it is that your Salesforce org is a tenant. And another term that you're going to want to be familiar with if you aren't already is metadata. Metadata is the data that describes the various elements in your applications. So this could be your user interface, it could be your automations, or maybe it could be your objects and fields. And something to keep in mind, especially if you have experience doing traditional development in on-premise systems, is that when you create a new object or build an automation in the Salesforce platform, the platform doesn't create an actual table in the underlying database or compile any code at all. Instead, it stores some metadata that it can use to materialize virtual application components dynamically at runtime. To support this architecture, a single instance of the Salesforce platform uses a single shared multi-tenant database with a shared schema that stores tenant-specific metadata and data. That data and metadata are virtualized into tenant-specific database schemas. There's also a multi-tenant kernel, which is commonly referred to as the application runtime. The kernel receives requests from the various tenants and sends responses back to them. When the kernel receives a request, it reads the metadata and data from the virtual schemas to dynamically provide tenant-specific applications, business logic, and APIs at runtime. Now, something that's important to point out here is that as an architect, there's really nothing that you can do to change any of the functionality that I just described. It's how the platform works under the hood. But understanding this functionality will help you make better decisions when it comes to the things that you can control, and it should also add a little bit of clarity to some of the topics that we discuss in the Well-Architected Framework. This video really only scratches the surface of these concepts. If you want to read more about them, make sure to check out the Platform Multi-Tenant Architecture document that's available on the Salesforce Architects website, and also the Salesforce Well-Architected Framework. I put links to both of them below. If you found this content to be useful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I am looking forward to seeing you next time.